Hello and welcome to the video. In today's video I'm going to show you a feature within Excel called tables. So most of us have at some point in time used filters within Microsoft Excel. Tables appears to be filters with um, a coloured formatting added to the data but it is a lot more than that. To put this data into a table if I just click somewhere within the data set if I then go to the insert menu and I pick the option of tables here it should be intelligent enough to work out where your data starts and ends what it's also doing is clarifying to you that that first row within that data set isn't part of your data it is actually the headings there at the top now if you ever get a data set that doesn't have headings really good thing here is you could untick that box and what will happen then is Excel will just add a very generic row at the top just calling each column column 1 column 2 column 3 for however many columns there is because mine has headings I'm going to leave it ticked and I'm going to press OK so at this point it then adds the filter arrows and it gives me this color scheme now if I'm not happy with the color scheme that I've got I can go in and I can pick one of the other color schemes that's in here and as you see as I float over them it gives me what's called a live preview so I'm going to go for that one now as well as making um, the filters appear and give it color it has also made this into what's called a named range and by default it's called it table one so if I go to the box I would normally go to to see where the named ranges are you'll see table one there and you'll see that it selects from the first cell A5 through to the last cell in this case which is um, I40 now table one's not a very good name um, moving forward it's not something that you're going to associate with your data so up at the top of the screen on my table design ribbon I can rename that table one to something more meaningful to me so I'm going to call that house data and again for those who haven't used named areas before um, a restriction of naming them is you're not allowed to put spaces in so if I press enter now instead of table one it's now called house data now another useful feature of tables is if I go to the next column along and if I put in something like price per bedroom when I press enter now that column will become part of my data set and it will get its own filter arrow now if this was just normal filters that column wouldn't get a filter arrow also calculations when you've got a table are slightly different so if I now do equals and um, what I want to do is work out how much per bedroom uh, we're paying so I've got the price now if I click on it instead of putting E5 in the formula it puts this square bracket at price so it's referencing the name of the column that I've assigned it to and the at just means it's at the same relative location so it's at the same row if I now put the forward slash in for divide and then I click on the figure in the bedrooms column again does the same thing the really good thing now is if I press enter I get all of the answers again I can go now and format that I'm just going to make that into uh, two decimal places in fact I'll make it into currency that will fix that problem okay so the really cool feature with that is not only does it do the first formula it does all of them and it will keep on going so if I was to go and add a new row at the bottom that too would get its own calculation it would be zero until I filled in the number of bedrooms and the the price okay now the other thing that's useful in this if I was doing normal filters going to the bottom of a column and just doing some average max main count it doesn't really work when you put a filter on so if you put a filter on and you've got a sum at the bottom the figure won't be affected by filters however with a table if I go back to the table design ribbon it has this built-in thing called the total row now when I activate that the next row below the last row of data gets this word total 
and the very last column gets calculation. If that column itself has numbers in, that will be a sum. If the last column has words in, it would be a count of the number of cells that had words in. And if we look at the formula it's giving me, it's not the normal sum, it's the subtotal formula. And subtotals, they are affected by filters being added. Now if I go to that cell, you'll see there's a little drop down arrow. And if I press on that, you'll see I can pick other calculation types. So I could have the average, could have a count, count number, max, min, any of these. In fact, I'm going to go for average on this one. So now that is the average price per bedroom for that data that's there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a few more calculations into here. So I'm going to add in under the price column. I'm going to go to the drop down. I'm going to pick sum. Under the district, I'm going to add a count formula. And then under available, I'm going to add a count formula as well. So if I now go back to the top of my data set and I want to have a quick look just at a particular district, I can go in the drop down, select the district in question, and now the total row is based on what's still visible on the screen. Okay, so let me clear the filter off that. Now what I want to do is I want to add some more data to this data set. If I want to add more data, normally most people will just right click and move the total row down. The problem with that is, if you add a new row, a lot of the time that will not show the new row in the calculations. Also, if you have other data on that screen and you insert, you have a, a danger of putting a gap into that data set. With a table, if you just go to the last cell on that last row, and you press the tab key that will insert a new row and the good thing with that is as I'll demonstrate in a few moments if you were to add some data that you copied and pasted if it was more than one row it would adapt and it would give you enough space and it would put the total row below the end of what you pasted before I paste some data in though I'm going to show you another really cool feature about the um, table so I'm going to do a really quick sum if in column L and column M. So I'm going to zoom out a bit just so that I can see a little bit more. So I'm going to pick a, a region, a district. I'm going to put Manchester in there. And what I want to do now is I want to add up the prices for Manchester. So I would do equals sum if. Now my range is going to be where the districts are. Now within a, a table there are micro um, named areas so as well as the table itself being a named area each column itself is a named area so if I start to type in the word house I can select the house data from the um, drop down I can then put a square bracket in just like it did in the price per bedroom and I can now pick the column that I want so I'm going to pick district and put my square bracket in at the end to close it so rather than going and selecting all of that column I can select it from here if I didn't have the title at the top I'd have been able to click in between the H and where the title was but now put my comma in and I pick my criteria which is the cell with Manchester in I can now do the same again and do my sum range so that's again going to be house data and this time it's going to be the price column so now that I've done that if I close my bracket I get my value and again I'm going to format that to show as current set so normally if you've done a formula like this a lot of people will select from the beginning of the data set to the end of the data set the problem then is if you add more data in, it will not see that new data and you have to go back and update your formula. Some people that I've taught in the past have told me that they select the whole column. So they would click on the H at the top for the, for the districts and then obviously the E at the top for price. And that will work and that will be more future proof. However, that does put a lot of strain on Excel. You're using a lot of Excel's resources 
and it could cause instabilities in your spreadsheet if you've got a large number of those types of formulas. On this worksheet I've got a new set of data that I want to add into that original set of data. So what I can do now is I can go and select all the data minus the headings and copy it and remember I added a new row at the bottom. Now if I click in that first cell on that row, so into A41 and I paste, you will find that it works that information out. And if I scroll it down, you will see that it's actually moved the total row to the bottom. Now if I go up and I have a look at my sum if that I did, you will notice that the calculation has increased. So it's gone up based on the fact that I've put that new data in. So unlike a normal formula that I'd have to go and update, or even a normal named area where I'd have to go and update the named area, with this it's a dynamic set of named areas and I don't have to do that. So that's the end of the video guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you did like it, can you give me a thumbs up? And if you want to see more of my videos, please remember to press subscribe and press the notification bell because I plan to do two videos a week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.